I'm Wanda Irwin. I was a Carnes, and I was born right here in Cane Hill. And the house I was born in is still here, and that was in uh, February the 24th, 1930, when I was born. <clears throat> My daddy was a rural mail carrier here in, from Cane Hill. And um, my mother was a stay-at-home mother because she had six children. I was the youngest of six children. And uh, what else? Okay, uh, this interview is by Scott Davis, and this is part of the Cane Hill Oral History Project. And we just want to be sure that you know we're going to use this recording for educational purposes and that we want that we have your permission to reproduce it. That's fine. Thank you. Tell me more about your parents, their names and what they did. My daddy was Sturman Carnes and like I say he was a rural mail carrier here out of Cane Hill. Worked out of the post office here at Cane Hill and uh, he carried mail over toward Clyde and over the mountain which was called Hail Mountain at the time. And my mother was a stay-at-home mother uh, of six children, and I was the youngest of six. And they, of course, they think I was spoiled, and I guess I was. <laughs> so uh, uh, I had, like I say, I had five siblings. One, one, the first one was Meryl Carnes. The second one was Marguerite Carnes. Then Swarn Carnes. And he was known as Son, they called him Son. And my next brother was Curtis, and uh, he worked in the bank, he was, became president of the Bank of Lincoln. And uh, his nickname was Squirt, everybody laughed at that. And then my next sister was Eileen Carnes, she married Ralph Moore, and she lives in Oklahoma City. And uh, then me. Uh, tell me about some of your routines at home when you were uh, growing up. What were some of the things you did at home as a family and as the kids would do to help? Well, I think you first thing you need to know that I was born in 1930 and that was before the war. As well, as I was a teenager, it was during the war. And times were different then. Uh, <clears throat> Cane Hill, boy, the boys from Cane Hill went to service. So we we it took a lot of people out of our school to go to the war and uh, we uh, of course it was a year of rationing we didn't have any sugar it was rationed coffee was rationed gasoline was rationed and sugar and my family loved strawberry shortcake and we we regretted it the year we didn't have sugar for our strawberries. It was not good because we loved strawberry shortcake. And uh, <clears throat> my uh, brothers went to service also. And this is when I was, I was a good to be a teenager. And things changed so much. We, the main thing we as teenagers wanted, like to go to this basketball game. And that was the only sport we had here. So, pretty much was basketball and we had to travel to go to play other places. <clears throat> the farthest one was West Fork and we uh, couldn't drive, couldn't take the school bus to take us so we rode in the back of trucks usually to go to the ball games and uh, in our court here in Cane Hill wasn't it? Con it's not a concrete cord at all or a board cord. It was a gravel. They, every year we got fresh gravel on our court, and that sounds terrible now. Falling down on that gravel and everything, but it made the court much better than just the ground. And we were thrilled with that when we got new layer of gravel on our court. And um, but we we did have good basketball teams, and they. Uh, won the Washington County uh, tournament s several times and that was our big thing and then uh, I have to mention the church I think that had a lot of bearing on all of our lives we uh, <clears throat> Mr. Skinner was our preacher here and every week he came to school 
I think it was on Friday morning, and gave them what we call chapel. We all, the whole school, went to chapel. And that had a lot of meaning to us as young people. And um, I started the school in 1935, I guess it was. And um, Mary Richardson was my teacher for three years. And she was a wonderful person. And well known, and well known here in Cane Hill. And um, and then I had Miss, then Mrs. Family was our superintendent, but her daughter also taught school in the uh, in the fifth and sixth grade, I believe it was. And then I had uh, a Mr. White for one year, and then uh, I was in junior high and. Another girl in my class, my one of my best friends and I, we made good grades in the seventh grade, so we got to skip the eighth grade and went on to the high school. And there we had uh, Martha Elizabeth Moore was a very, very good teacher. And then we learned a lot from her how to behave and how to respect people and how to participate in the Whatever's going on, we want. She wanted us to be involved, and uh, then another girl, uh, Betty, and I cannot remember her last name, and uh, Marie Benton Yates or Yates Benton uh, were my teachers, and we who grew up in Cane Hill had a lot going for us because we were not taught just reading and writing, we were taught a lot of other things. How to get along in life and, and take part in government. And uh, there were, during the war, like I say, the boys were going to war and somehow it affected the whole county, uh, city of Cane Hill because things changed. Not, they were not normal environment during the war. And uh, we didn't have boys, and a lot of time if they were married, their wives left too to go where they could be close to their husbands. And so we had to make a lot of sacrifices during the war. And uh, what else? What do you remember about the stores and the local businesses here in town when you were a kid? Okay. Cane Hill, as some of the older people know, was the center of. Uh, attraction of uh, shopping and everything. Cane Hill used to be quite a little town, but like I say, I'm old, but I'm not as old as what people think about Cane Hill as being. I keep, people ask me if I went to the college here in Cane Hill, I just laugh because the college closed, I think, in 1857, right? And uh, I know about the college, but it, it well, the school that we went to was the, what they call the college, but there was a college before that, and that was, Cane Hill was well known for, and uh, went through several stages during the war, and it was uh, burned at one time, and then there was a, a, a arsonist also burned it the second time, and it was rebuilt, and that's the building that I went to school in. And it closed in 1948, I think. And uh, <clears throat> that's where I went all 12 years of my school. But then I went to the university for two years. And back then there was such a shortage of teachers in Arkansas that they asked me if I'd come teach at Cane Hill. And I did for a year and a half, I think it was. And uh, of course my students were much younger than I was. So what was it like as a teacher at Cane Hill? Well, it wasn't bad. Back to the, I, I did some uh, spell in teaching at Lincoln and Perry Grove, and I think compared to uh, the school kids in that time, Cane Hill was outstanding. The students were. Most of them did go to college. And if you track them down, they're all doing well. And uh, I... I give Martha Elizabeth Moore and Mr. Moore and uh, uh, mainly a credit for what, if you track 
the kids down that graduate from here, they're all doing well. I don't know if that we had any crime or shooting or anything like that back in our time. It was very sedated community and we all got together. We It took all of us to all grades to make a party. We didn't have many parties, but our Halloween stands out in my mind. We had a nice Halloween carnival and we all got prizes and I guess that's what I liked. And uh, we, we really didn't have a lot of activities in school other than the basketball. But uh, What did kids do back in those days for fun? Well, mainly going to movies. We, um, I went to Presbyterian Church, of course that was the only church here at the time, and uh, we would, the young people would meet there around five o'clock on Sunday afternoon and have our little program, and then we all go, went to the movies, mainly in Prairie Grove, and that was a big part of our <coughs> life, is going to the movie, and some of us went on Saturday afternoon too, and they always had Western movies on Saturday and Saturday night, and then they changed for Sunday night. So some of us made both of those movies. We we did get to the movies very girl, but of course we couldn't go far because we didn't have gasoline to drive very far. And uh, that was the main activity. Other than we made our own activity, we. A lot of time, I remember my older brothers meeting downtown in Cane Hill and playing games like kick the can and I forgot what else, but they made their own entertainment mainly. Uh, what about the adults? What did they do for fun? Well, there was a home demonstration club that my mother went to and uh, they were very active in our community promoting things helping each other when they needed help. And then, uh, of course, Daddy had a farm uh, that he'd come in off the route, he'd get off the route about 2.30 and he'd go eat lunch and then go straight to the farm and take us with him if, we, if there was something that we could do, like picking strawberries and picking up potatoes. And he, he made, and the boys had to go with him to, uh, the, our farm was about a mile north of, yeah, north of Cane Hill and my brothers would go early in the morning and milk and then they had to go back in the evening to milk again. And we stayed, we girls stayed pretty busy at uh, just helping our mother. But my older sister was 12 years older than I was so I don't remember a whole lot about her. <clears throat> but uh, she was very active in in school, and she became a teacher. And my next uh, sister went to work in Tulsa for a uh, telephone company, AT and T. And then my next, well, my two brothers were in service most time. I was growing up, and my sister, just two years older than I am, she. Went, she uh, went to, of course, they all went to the university except my, uh, well, no, we all went to the university and we girls graduated from there and I think, well, my brother, oldest brother was in the service, he was an engineer and he uh, went to work. In, in fact, when he's in the Army as an engineer, they gave him a special job with that and then when he came home, well, he uh, <clears throat> was uh, uh, went to work for uh, Dow Chemical, and then my other brother, like I say, was president in the bank at Lincoln, and so we all were both very well educated, and I know Daddy sacrificed a lot to send us to school, and uh, he was a wonderful person. He was ready to help anybody on his route that needed help and a lot of people needed help back during the war. He, he would, they'd, he'd loan them money and he said he don't remember ever losing a dime on his loans to his kind of customers. They'd give him a hand, uh, tie a hand on the, at the mailbox or something to repay him for every 
Uh, he said he never lost, lost, lost a dime, but he, he helped a lot of people. And my mother, like I say, was in the home demonstration club, and then the church had a missionary society group, and she was real active in that. But um, we all went to church. My mother saw that we were in church every Sunday that we possibly could be, and uh, we were. And I, I grew up in the church, and I was pretty active in the church. I, and as a teenager, I got the young people together to start our uh, Christian endeavor, we called it, on Sunday evening, and then we go to the movie and had fun doing both of those things. And what else? Uh, what, what memories do you have of the mill? Uh, do you remember seeing it yourself? I saw the mill long before it was torn down, but uh, <clears throat> I was too young to know when the mill was running or anything. And then by the time I got up oh, teenagers, well, I, it, they tore it down. But I do remember my older brothers and other boys in town riding on the old mill wheel. You could get on it and walk up it and then turn the wheel. And that, I barely remember that. That must have been torn down, I don't know what year, but maybe the in the late 30s, early 40s, probably. What about stories of people st talking about going there? Do you remember hearing any stories about people? Well, just some of the older boys walked around the wheel. Uh, I don't remember much. I do remember the building, but I don't remember much else. It wasn't active when I was. Uh, what about, what would you like to see done with the old college building once it's finished? I mean, I'm, you're familiar with the project. What, do you, what would you like to see them use that building for? Well, it was being used for a few things before they restored it. And now I'm sure there will be more activity there. I, I'm not really up to date on that, but I'm sure it'll be used. Okay. Uh, what other stories do you have about Cane Hill maybe that I haven't thought to ask about or that you can well, remember? Well, you asked me about the businesses in Cane Hill. I remember as a small child I'm talking about it and at one time it was a shopping center of course and it had a place they had made ladies hats and they had a mattress factory and a, I don't know what you call where they put shoes on the horses, what do you call that, I don't know. But I, that was a little before my time, I just vaguely remember people talking about it. And if anybody that's my age or may remember that it came here right in the center of the road, they had a um, place to water horses, and that was there all the time I was a child. And then they moved, moved it up on the Cane Hill campus. And I don't know exactly what their plans are now for it, but it was a kind of a center point and everybody remembered Cane Hill by the place in the middle of the road, the spring, I want to call it. And it was fed by spring water. And we, you all, and everybody knows that Cane Hill has lots of spring, lots of good water. And there was a spring up from my house that water, at that before we got city water, it pretty well was water to about every house in Cane Hill because it was a big spring and no city water at Cane Hill at that time. Um, what other stories can you think of? What do you remember about going into Shakers or the drugstore or some of the other businesses? What do you remember about that? Did you ask that? Uh, we live about a block. We were just about a block from downtown Cane Hill. And we got our mail about 9.30 in the morning. And my mother, I remember, sending me down to get the mail. When I was a little girl, little girl I didn't think about it much about it. But then... What I mainly remember is after they moved the post office over across the street, and there was always men sitting on the bench out in front, mainly uh, whittling on a stick or something. 
And I always hate it. You walk in front of those men who don't get the post office and uh, get the mail. But I was a daughter of a postman, and, and they always put our mail on a certain corner inside the building, and that place is still up at the Cane Hill School. They moved it from downtown up there to the museum part, but now I think they're moving it back down here. Maybe it's already moved, I don't know, to downtown. But uh, there was a lot of men that didn't have jobs, older fellas, and more people have asked me, well, what, how did they make a living? And I, I can't answer that, because I could name several guys that I didn't even know what they did for a living. But they somehow, I guess, just farming. And uh, most of the people had a, a little bit of a farm, maybe not a big farm, but but my husband, James Irwin, a lot of y'all know James, because he, he was the teacher at Lincoln, and then he uh, took a job with Tyson's in Springdale. In 1960, we moved to Springdale. Oh, I was married in uh, 1949, and my husband was the agri teacher at Prairie Grove at that time. And then uh, that's when we got married, and, we, and I first lived in Prairie Grove, and, we were married and then we moved to the farm and James had inherited the Irwin Farm, which is home, is homestead, it is the Irwin Farm. So we still own that, I don't, I didn't sell it after James died. And uh, my youngest son runs it now. My other son lives in Little Rock and he helps, but, but uh, uh, Clark Irwin is the one that's running it now. He's doing a good job. He's got a good herd of cattle. The downtown Cane Hill was pretty lively when I was growing up. There were people, the people were making, had pretty good living, so I don't know of anybody that was hurting for food or anything, and I'm not real sure of how they made money, but they did. And, Everybody was very close knit in Cane Hill. We knew everybody and we knew who needed help and they we all helped pitched in help. Now after uh living in Prairie Grove I moved we moved to the farm and so I was really back in the Cane Hill area then. So I really uh, am attached to Cane Hill and I've lived here all my life until I went to college and then I was married and I moved back to Clyde, which is just a mile down the road.